So this week, I'm going to be doing an exercise in making a review out of a relatively straightforward ink. This is Namiki Black. I will say I've seen some interesting bottles, but this one is definitely out there. I mean, it's making me want to stop in Roswell on my next vacation because of the strong UFO vibes it's giving. That said though, Pilot's not a unusual player in the weird bottle design. Take this bottle of Konpeki, it's got that vertical pancake feel. And then you've got this bulbous bottle that comes with the pens like the Pilot Custom 823 and a few of their other higher end pens. That being said though, I think if I had to choose between the 70 mil bulbous bottle and the 60 mil UFO bottle, I would probably choose the UFO bottle any day of the week because I, I just like the more subtle, subdued feel that it has. That being said though, from left to right, you've got a 70 mil bottle, a 60 mil bottle, and a 50 mil bottle. So no matter what unusual shape Pilot's going for, they're definitely providing value. And moving on from bottle talk and over to the pen, for this review, we're gonna be using my Moon Man eyedropper. That way we can see kind of the overall tint of the ink, which with a black ink, yeah, it's gonna look like an oil slick. Surprisingly enough, this pen is not full, but the ink is so thick that it looks like it. And once we get this ink on paper, you can see that it is just a bold in your face black ink, which is actually kind of unusual. A lot of the other brands like Pelican and Waterman, their black inks are a little bit more subdued, a little bit more coal looking, actually even a little bit more smoke looking in some situations. So having a black ink that is just in your face and purposeful like this is actually a really nice breath of fresh air. I shouldn't be too surprised, however, as this is from the same company that makes the inks that go into some of the pens I've hated, like the G2. I know a few people are probably gonna dislike this video for that, but the G2 just isn't my jam. Whereas this ink is a good workhorse that I know I can trust. I mean, like here on Rhodia, I'm not having any flow issues, I'm not having any feed issues, and the ink is coming out just as strong in one spot as it is everywhere else. And I think that's kind of what they were going for here. They're not looking at a pen and paper and ink combination that you would use for journaling. They're looking at a pen, paper, and ink combination for someone that doesn't know what type of paper they're gonna be using. This ink is meant for switching from receipt paper to notebook paper, to Rhodia paper, to Tomoe paper. You can see here that switching from Rhodia to Tomoe, we're getting equal performance yet again. And sure, I'm not writing the fastest, but this is from a fine nib and we're still getting a nice bold line without any skipping, any hard starting. So it's a good lubricated ink, it's a good flowing ink, and it's something that you would come to expect from a company that's got the pedigree that Pilot has. And surprisingly enough, I'm not finding this ink boring to write with at all. I actually just did the entire last batch of pen pal letters with this ink, probably much to the chagrin of my pen pals, but that's their problem, not yours. One thing I would be remiss of if I didn't cover it was the actual range of this ink. On the left, you can see what would happen if you put this in like an ultra extra fine or did something where you just had a super light flow of ink. And then if you put this in a broader or double broad, you could probably get the brownish hues that we're seeing on the right hand side. So even though this is a black ink, it does have quite a bit of dynamic to it. And you can see from the dry times here, this being on Rhodia, that we're well behaved by 15 seconds. And when we switch over to Tomoe, we're still dry by 20 seconds. And that's with me going out of my way to make sure that I was laying the lines on pretty thick for this one. So it's actually more realistic that it would be dry by 15 as well, especially for you people that tend to write fast. And as I was saying, this is supposed to be a workhorse ink that's supposed to be able to withstand a lot of different environments and papers. So with the water test, I would be really shocked if this just washed away. What we're looking for is anything that is more than a smidge of lifting. You see that it's coming off just a little bit, but overall, it looks like it's holding really well as we let the water soak in. And then when we go to dry it, what we're gonna see is that the majority of the ink is still on the paper. That's not a ghosting layer, that's just the ink saying, I'm not leaving. So yeah, workhorse ink, thumbs up. And that kind of brings us back around to the recap. We've got a workhorse ink for many papers, many situations, many environments that is below $10. You get 60 mil of high quality ink from a company with a good pedigree. And yes, even for a black ink, it does have some dynamic. It's really just gonna depend on the speed that you write with and the nib that you're writing with as well. 
but for anyone that needs a good all-around black ink for the workplace or for home, this is a go-to. I can say from personal experience that once this bottle runs out, I'm definitely going to be getting another because anytime I put something through the post or anytime I go out in public, this is the one ink that I always make sure is inked up in one of my pens. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to ink up that subscribe button, become a patron for early releases and extras, follow the channel on Twitter and Instagram, and remember, don't drink the ink.